I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Twenty-two Chevrolet Camaro SS One Ali manual with launch control. <laughs> Hard shifts there. Horsepower and torque. 455 horsepower, 455 pound-feet of torque for a perfect horse pork from a 6.2 liter V8. Naturally aspirated. Yeah, it's an LT1 engine. So this is not the ZL1, which is this a motor supercharged to 650, 650. Correct, so this is the 1LE, which is the track package. Okay, so let me auto rev match downshift with my paddles on my manual car and not much at the bottom, but at the top we get a lot more. Yeah, it's nice and decently torquey, but it likes the mid-range. It actually likes to be revved. And we haven't driven a Camaro in a while. No, we haven't. We actually, we've never driven a regular Camaro up until right now. Yeah. In the I, new generation. Uh, we asked, there wasn't available, but this is very cool to have. And I feel like this is full on sports car with super wide tires. This isn't like a fun mess around street car anymore. Yeah, putting the one LE package really makes a difference. So Yuri, make that difference to a cliche corner for me. It did rain a little bit. It did, it's I'm slick. in, uh, I think, sport two competitive traction or whatever. Yep. And yeah, it just feels like that bogged down a bit. Really good sports car. And if you wanted to turn all of that off and slidey slide and do donuts, Instead of getting into competitive traction with the double traction click, you just hold it until traction stability turn off like all the other Cadillacs and Corvettes. Yeah, this is a really good car. This is now a track car. That 1LE package makes a huge difference. Without even driving the SS, you could tell that this is now like, yeah. geared to be a track car. And this is a 2SS, not a 1SS. And since I don't know much about the newer Camaros, I had to look it up. And that's just like a, it's, a package that gives you more base options. Yes, it's trim packages. Yeah, I thought it was like 2SS, so it's faster than the 1SS. It's like, well, it's like the same horsepower, same motor, and then if you get the LT1, yes. that's I think the same motor in like a base model Camaro with less options. Which is cool that they offer that. Yeah. Because you can't get a Mustang without a GT badge that isn't a V8. A little confusing though. So what I'd like to get into is the looks, starting with they massacred my boy. They massacred this Look, boy. Man, it is so bad looking. Okay. My buddy recently bought a ZL1 1LE that took him a year to get because they were building CT5s and stuff. Congratulations. Shout out Mark and his looks amazing. It's got the cool front end. This has the other front end. And I like variations of this, but with this with the headlights, the fog lights, the, the color, the front license plate, like they just need to put the Camaro to rest, let it sit for another 10 years and then like bring something back different. I think. Well, apparently this is going to be killed off soon. Uh, I don't know if that's official by now, but uh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. this looks really bad. The the ZL1 1LE looks incredible because the headlights like everything's totally different. It's like what Ford did with the GT350 versus the regular Mustang. It had slightly different headlights like all that stuff they kind of did here. Yeah, shout out to when they brought the Camaro back in Transformers and then it's just all downhill from there. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, it's still looks pretty all right. The side view is like pretty much normal Camaro. It like actually looks like pony car, muscle car, sports car ish. Right. It does like side profile is the same as it would be. It's just the front that they butchered. The front, um, the front, the lip at the front is really cool. It's yeah. Huge. That's part of that one LE package. Also this uh, satin black hood is also part of that one LE package. Yeah. You got the like heat extractor, I guess when you pop the hood, it looks like something from the nineties. It doesn't look like yes. what you'd expect out of a 2022. Which is great. Car. Cause you'd expect like plastics to be covering everything. I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, like, a coyote from a Mustang looks more modern, the engine yeah, at least. That, I, that's I get what, what I was expecting. Yeah. Uh, the wheels are okay, like a five spoke ish. They, they don't really stand out to me. I would prefer, actually, I don't know. They're nice. They're, they're, they're just okay. We got the one LE brakes on here. Yeah, so you get Brembo's on here, which get, is good. Will be a Continental recommended tire for a Camaro. The Extreme Contact Sport. Then how about moving to the back? Do you like the exhaust tips? I, I mean, they're real, can't complain. Let's listen to it from the outside. Good sound. 
it is a good sound. It's not the best sound, but it's good. It's, yeah. I also don't really like the new Coyote sound. It's got, like, I think this is a better tone. I have realized that I don't like GM V8's sound unless they're supercharged. Okay. Or the engines, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fair. For, for me, like, it doesn't do it for me. I, I can understand that. Do you like the little spoiler on the end? I do. It's part of that one LE package. Okay. The taillights are pretty cool. They're like smoked out, clear, dark. Yeah, and then just like nice outlines. There are. There was a version of a Camaro that looked so. It looked just like a regular like Malibu. Remember, it was just like a f normal light. I'll show you a picture. Okay, I don't. You'll, you'll hate it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I confirm that I hate it probably. And then to end off the back end and looks, the trunk is so high up to get stuff in and out, and it's so tricky. But I think they had to do weird stuff like that and have the small windows and have this little camera to see out the back because of the way it looks. It's so small and like, it doesn't look bad to me. Like I like how small and like sports car this looks. It definitely doesn't look bad, but I have some serious ergonomics complaints when I'm driving. But um, I think my favorite Camaro ever in this new generation was the Z28 or Z28 for my friends up north where I'm from. I, I honestly haven't liked any of the new ones. ZL11 LE and then the um, the first uh, Bumblebee that came out. And, yeah. and like this whole gen has just not been my style. Well, the, the cool part of that Z28 is that it had seven liter V8 from the Corvette. I think I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. Yes, no, I do like that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. That, okay, yeah, yeah, that's cool. They got LS7. But I still, I think I'd rather go like a Catfish Camaro over this. Oh. Like I would just go older stuff. I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. This, this generation didn't. I understand that. Didn't yeah. fizzle my whistle. No, it didn't for me either. And then I guess image-wise, like Challenger totally killed uh, Chevrolet when yeah. it came to like everything they've been doing. Like, like muscle car stuff, they killed. So much more popular than this. Like, okay, remember the 392 um, with the manual Challenger? Yep. I almost feel like I would like that more than this. I think so too. As a car, but. This shifter compared to that Nissan Z, yeah. this is like the perfect shifter. That first, first to second shift, like, let me in. Goes in. Compared to the Z, this was the most perfect shift ever. So this is a Tremec, I think it's a TR6060. It's a really good transmission. It's different than the one that's in the Mustang Mach 1. Yeah, this is, woo! Cause the ZL1 we drove was automatic. We haven't driven a manual one of those. That with the manual is probably perfection. That's what my buddy Mark got. Shout out Mark again. Yeah, dude, got shout cool out. Zeal One One LE is like I would say probably my favorite the, Chevy. His car, modern Chevy. He got he, he tried to buy his car, so it showed up before his first kid was born. It showed up right after she was born, and, and he's still rocking that car. That's, that's that's sick. That's sick. All right, your turn to drive. Send it. I have never launched this car. First time. You're shifting it just as hard as me. Yeah, so this has really long gears and I really don't like that on the road, on the track. Totally different story, I'm sure it would be fantastic. This has that same Porsche GT4 problem. Yeah, but with the track package, the wide tires, they're like, this is a track car. Yeah. Don't complain. Yeah, so second <laughs> gear goes to like 130 kilometers per hour or something like that, which I'm sure is to help with the zero to 60 as well, which I think is in the high three second range if you can manage that with the manual and just kind of be a total animal with it. I feel like you let off the clutch a little like faster than I did and like that, that hooked up pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it was a good launch. Nice, the really good manual launch control. Yeah, and this, like this transmission, like you said, is really good, six speed. Um, I do like a lot about this. So the engine kind of feels coarse to me like down low it's not very smooth but once you're in that high rev range like yeah this wants to be revved because red line's actually pretty high it's almost 7,000 yeah the down the, not having any power down low stuff like kind of bugs me because I was trying to like see if you could just like you know turn it away a little bit choo -choo -choo -choo, and it, like it just doesn't do any of that where not that we can confirm or deny but the Nissan Z could do that. Yeah, theoretically. So this has a bunch of drive modes. I've been driving in track mode because then track mode unlocks your uh, traction control modes, your competitive driving modes. Yeah. Uh, so that's the only way you can get to them. Uh, there's no custom mode, which would be nice because we do have Magna Ride. The suspension is really good on this car over the bump. Full stiff, that is not too stiff. Like that ZL1 one at least. Very reasonable. Yeah, so now it's downshift as it's raining a little bit harder, so I'm gonna take it easy. It's gonna bog you down too, because you're not in full off. Yeah, but it feels great through here. Like the front end grip is 
I, I did not expect this. This this feels to me closer to um, a Mustang Mach 1 than it does like a Mustang performance pack. I expected it. After the it, ZL11 LE, it's like, true. Yeah, like Chev- it, Chevrolet's got some really good engineers and some really bad marketing. The thing is, designers. I didn't know how much of that was the ZL1 part versus the 1 LE part. Now that I know it's really the 1 LE part, yeah. this is great. The steering is great. It tightens up a lot in track mode. So that's when, like driving around in the city, I'm in sport just to have the softer steering because you can't really change that because there's no custom modes. So that kind of sucks. And this being a rear wheel drive car, it does have an ELSD, which is nice. It's very predictable coming in and out of corners. I really like how this car drives. Yep, it is a great sports car for track, especially. Yeah, so if you want that 1LE package, which I would highly recommend, uh, it's still good on the streets and everything. Like that. It's kind of expensive. It's like $8,500, but it's definitely worth Get it. it. Because what Ford did, which is kind of funny, they used to offer the Mustang Performance Pack 2, which gave you Magna Ride and all that stuff. They had to eliminate that and give it to the Mach 1 to justify the existence of the Mach 1. So now they only have Performance Package 1. And if you're looking for a Mach 1, if you're looking for a Mustang or a Camaro, maybe even a Challenger, hit up tsp.truecar.com. Discounted price offers. And uh, that might be the only place you'll have to find these in the next couple years, because if they stop production on this, yeah. you have to buy a used one. But that's sweet. Like, they're getting rid of uh, the gas Challengers. They're getting rid of the Camaro, we think. And Mustang is now an electric SUV. Kind of. But it's also the new generation of the Mustangs coming very soon yeah, uh, in some, September. Someone I know went to that event where they didn't unre- unreveal the camera. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's like, this could have been an email. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the last major thing is that you get with the 1LE package is additional coolers for your oil, your differential, and your trans. Okay, I got a couple things. What's that? I don't like the start-stop button being square. No, that is... It's, it's a ridiculous thing, but it's also, I get it. Next thing, head-up display is very good, especially for shifting gears. It is. Now, let me get to my ergonomic complaints. My elbows are resting right here. This is the stiffest, like, this is just cardboard wrapped in, like, stone wrapped in leather. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, not it's, the best. it's terrible. But I had my arms up the whole time, so I didn't so notice that it being an issue for chilling me. in the city, I'm cruising like this. This elbow starts to hurt. This elbow starts to hurt. The so city, I now have to drive like city. this. You go the, to the city. Yeah. Bro, that's a city over there. But speaking of driving in the city, the ZL1 1LE was so bumpy to the point where it was like borderline undrivable, and this is much, much more easy to drive everywhere in the actual real cities. Well, exactly. That's why I didn't know how much of that part was ZL1 versus SS and 1LE. The, the bumpiness is much better in this. Yeah, so your buddy Mark is probably suffering in the city. Shout out, shout out Mark for <laughs> suffering in the city. Third shout out, Mark. Yo, he uh, bought a ZL1 No, 1LE. I know. That's like... <laughs> Okay, so ergonomic complaints, uh, elbows out of the way. The next thing is how small the windows are. Now, it's cool because it looks like that from the outside, but going through a drive through trying to like get a car wash, I actually had to open the door because I couldn't press the numbers. So I'm like, all this stuff is really dumb. I can't see the person giving you the food. In my prowler, I literally have to turn my head sideways just to get it out. Like, that's I'm, what I'm, this I'm is. used to that, it's, but that's cool. You're doing the Supra like. Yeah, and then you have a small windshield, which is fine, but I just have to acknowledge that it is small. Your rear window is also tiny, which is why they that, have to give you this camera. You don't have to. Give, like, it's fine. There's enough. Nah, these there. are all com- legitimate complaints. Nah. Everyone will validate these. So then the back seats really suck. They're not usable, but they're not really usable in a Mustang either. The next thing is this thing sucks because the way to get to your phone, which you have to put under here, is terrible. No. And then your cup holders are you back here. You put your here. phone on the passenger no. seat or the cup holder. No, no, no. This is Jacob time. So then with your shifter, you have third gear over here. You go down to fourth, and then your elbow hits the cup. It's like there's just so much dumb stuff in the center console. Right, if you got a small cup, it would sink in, and you wouldn't be able to pull it out. It'd be a fail, but it wouldn't get in the way. Exactly. Next thing, we have plastic everywhere. It's just such a crappy-looking interior compared to the Mustang, and the Mustang isn't even that nice. Yeah, the pla- it is plastic, but that's like that's like GM trademark. Next thing, these things are kind of cool, and I do like them to adjust the climate control, but I did have a weird problem where I had this one set to 22 degrees, that one set to 22 degrees, this one was blasting cold air, that one was blasting hot air. No idea what, what was happening. I tried 23, tried 23, that one was still blasting hot air. That, that's weird. Well, we got hard buttons for everything. Maybe it was... Um... Maybe the car was 21. You know, yeah. you want 23, the only way to get there is hot air. Dude, I tried 21 after. I just didn't want to... Did you try it? Did you try low? No. Next thing I don't like is the actual gauges. They look really cheap, but they're functional, so that's fine. You don't like the gauge clusters? No. Oh, so the, great. the digital, I can't tell what's going on. It wasn't until this morning that I figured out I had no fuel because I'm like, oh, what are these gauges? And then I figured oh, out the that I saw... Oh, the little pods at the top? Yeah, it's so hard to read them. The only thing that sucks is that like you've got performance pages, but you can't have them all shown at once like you can in the new Corvette, which is like very convenient for tracking. Right. And then we have this infotainment, which I actually like. It works really well. It's angled down so that there's 
there's no glare, I guess, and yeah. it works well. And we have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Sirius XM, satellite radio rewinds. Yeah, yeah, and it's nice because when you have your Apple CarPlay, you can hold the home button to go to your CarPlay projection and then go back. I mean, there aren't enough hard buttons. It's got a volume knob, which is nice. And if you'd like your own Sirius XM in your own Camaro, Challenger, or Mustang, hit up SiriusXM.com or .ca slash the straight pipes. And with that, the Beach Boys channel is ending for the end of the summer for now, but we are going to be getting a new channel, the Red Hot Chili Peppers channel. And the last thing I want to talk about, which is an annoyance of mine, is the crackles and pops. They don't stop in this car, even in tour mode. So here, I'm gonna downshift, and you can do the blip thing. I rolled out my window a little bit. Okay, so you can do the blip thing, and I'm going to do the blip thing to make the crackles not stop. It's still crackling. Yeah, it's just harder to hear, I think, in this car right now, because they're but not it, as loud and like poppy as the Escalade. Yeah, but it crackles all the time. So putting this in tour mode quiets down the exhaust valves. Track, they're obviously open, but you still get the crackles in tour mode. So there's no way to not crackle, which I'm definitely over these crackles. Hit up Race Ready Garage, let them hook it up to their uh, dyno and tune that out. Oh, God. But they're, they're, they're more subtle than the Escalade V. So like you could like just zone out and not realize that they're there. I can't though. They're so predictable. It's I, every time I let off. I can. Okay. Zone out and let it go. Where I could not let that not happen in Escalade. See, so like I can't in this car. It's just I let off, and it does it. It's annoying. You're, you're, okay. You know what I find annoying is that, that that compass at the top of the gauge cluster. Like you can't turn that off that I can find it. Like I don't <laughs> yeah. give a shit that I'm going southwest yeah, yeah. and then south. Like, like there should not be that much emphasis yeah. on a compass. How do you feel about uh, heel-toe rev matching and pedal position? Okay, so I've had my auto rev matching on with these paddles the whole time. <laughs> okay, because that's how you actually control it. You have two paddles for some stupid reason, probably for budget. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it off, downshift. I like it actually, it's, it's yeah, great. It's nice. I, I hate that there's paddles on the steering wheel. Because like we drive a lot of like uh, paddle shift cars and you get in here like my hands like land there sometimes because I'm used to that. I'm like, what is, I just, I hate it. Yeah, I don't mind it, but it's, it just looks funny. And the fact that they both do the same thing, like both turn on and off. Not This one doesn't turn off, this one doesn't turn on. Okay, uh, another thing that I like about this car because there's a lot of stuff you hate, we got cool ambient lighting. Yeah. And the sound system ain't bad. We got the bow system. It's definitely bassy. Yeah, let's check the visors. Okay. Three, two, one. Ooh, full, full pass. pass. I mean, there's some nice, and you can get a performance drive recorder option for here, so that would be cool for the track. Hey, there's a lot to like about this car. Yeah, or you could get that like Garmin thing that you plug in, yeah. but then guess where you'd have to plug in the cigarette lighter? Uh, in here. Right here, like oh. how annoying that is. Like what a, what a dumb spot for it. Yeah. And then the, I hate the parking brake in here. Yeah, exactly. It's like a little flick thing, and it's not like super obvious when it happens, and like you don't have a manual e-brake for doing dumb stuff. Yes, so there's a lot of bad, but it's mostly all good. And the funniest part to both of us, is that all of these things are forgivable because they all exist in the ZL1. ZL1. So if you just get the ZL1 and then you just get that engine, you don't really care about this stuff. Yeah, I yeah. don't care. I would recommend getting the ZL1 1LE, but this is also awesome. There's really nothing wrong with it if you like Camaros and like don't want to get a Challenger or a Mustang. Like this is great. And then I personally, well, I guess we should probably get to the price first before I we say what should. I would take over this. So. Yes. Are you done? I'm done. Let's get to the price. This starts at $50,198. Canadian. And this one is $59,138. That's actually a really good price for what you're getting. Like, if you want like a fun track toy. I think it's better value than a Mustang with a performance pack one. I would not disagree with you, but what I would take over this, the Nissan Z. Really? Nissan Z. Yeah, I just, I liked that motor. I liked the feel of it. The first, the second thing was kind of annoying in the transmission or whatever, but like I could get used to that. And I think I like the look of that more than this. I actually 100% like the look of that more than this. I think that's a better street car, but track car, this is going to be hands down. Way but better. I don't want to. I don't want to take you to the track. Yeah, but if someone this. wants to, yeah, I'm yeah, just saying I, like objectively, this is yeah, the better yeah. car for the track. For sure. Yeah. But whatever. I want to do skitty skids, and I want to have my cool Nissan with the stupid exhaust on it. This will also do skitty skids, better ones even. So in terms of my hierarchy, I would recommend this over a regular Mustang with the performance pack, but I would go with a ZL1 or ZL1 1LE over this, no question. And then a Mustang Mach 1, I don't think the value is there over this. Like I do really like the car more, but it's also a lot more money. 
So I would go ZL1, 1LE, Mach 1, then this. Uh, I take Mach 1 over this. But it's a lot more money. So spend it. Okay. People have markups anyways, man. If like, you have the money, sure. But I'm going dollars for value. This is better. I go Mach 1. Okay, let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Subscribe. Say something, Yuri. Subscribe. <laughs>